All right, so we're talking about the Mark of the Beast, FICO is everything. But before I get in that, I wanna say thank you to all of the new people. I am loving these intellectually well-constructed, correctly spelled comments. Some of you guys are going hard. I really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. So now let's get into this wonderful bean footage. What's up guys? Uh, I have to start here. With the mark of the beast, your FICO score will be everything. This video might kind of be in a few different places because we got to go back in time, then we have to go to the future, and then we have to deal with the present. Uh, let's start here. I am thinking of opening up a credit repair agency. And in preparation to do the credit repair agency, I have 20 people that I am fixing their credit for free. And this is some of the stuff I've discovered. So that's kind of like what's going on now. And kind of go back in time. FICO score. Uh, years ago, I had a client who had a million dollar business, but he had bad credit. And I said, do, do this. Establish a relationship with Chase. Run, set up your business account, set up your personal account. And then three months after you do that, go in and ask if they will give you a credit card. And because of his banking activity, he got a credit card, even though he had bad credit because he had very high income. He had really strong financials. Uh, that is gone. That is over. Banks are not going to extend you credit if you have a high income and a bad FICO score. It is just not going to happen today. A few years ago, you could get away with it. You could build these relationships. You could get things. But today, it ain't happening. You could be you could be a million dollar depositor of a bank, which is quite significant. And if you have a bad FICO score, they will not extend credit products to you. They may extend secure credit products to you or they may do a collateralized loan using your cash as collateral. They may do something like that. But essentially, somebody with way less money than you, but a really good FICO score can get more credit and more credit products than you can, even though you make a lot of money. This is the financial environment that we're in. It is going forward, it is going to be extremely important to have cash and a high FICO score. Because if you have high income, you're gonna to need to have that high FICO score to leverage that high income into credit products. Um, I mean, like years ago, if you were just making money and you had like a bad credit score and you developed, really, you could actually get things because you, you had the cash. And some FinTechs operate like that. Like when I got my Divi business credit card, they did not pull, they did not do a credit check on me. They just used the revenue from my business. But going forward, you're going to have to have the highest FICO score you, you need, regardless of your income. And if you're poor, um, your high FICO, because of your low income, you will not be able to leverage that into meaning, meaningful income. I heard someone said that a credit score of $800 made someone worth $100,000. I don't think that's true. Uh, I don't think that's true at all. And one of the things that is happening in this environment, because like, I, I don't believe FICO 10 is widely used by banks at the moment. And FICO 10 is where they can look back over the last 24 months and evaluate your credit from that standpoint. but. I feel in the future, if you have a bad FICO, you're screwed. I mean, you're screwed. I feel going into the coming environment that we're going to have, and let's talk about the future. I believe in 2023, we will be in a recession. And if you don't have an over a 700 credit score, you're not going to be able to get squat. You're not going to be able to do nothing. You're, it's going to get to the point, like I'll, I'll tell you, when I moved into this place and they did my background check, it took them an hour. And it was like, you're approved. 
It took them an hour. And incidentally, they did not check my Experian or Equifax or TransUnion. They checked another, cause I have extremely good rental history. So, you know, I've rented some stuff in the past. So my rental history was superb, but what's going to happen if you have bad credit and you have bad information in databases, Lexus, Nexus, Anovis, uh, SageStream, if you have bad information in your credit bureaus, it's going to screw you in ways that you cannot even imagine because in China, they have this social media score. And what I feel in the future is gonna be a merge of your social media score and your FICO score. And if you've got, you know, the average person doesn't have like a large social media presence. They just on social media. But your FICO is gonna to have to be good. And you you know, you have Equifax, TransUnion, Experian. And then you have the alternate bureaus, LexisNexis, Anovis, SageStream, all that stuff's got to be straight. You cannot have something funky going over here because uh, one of the guys I'm working with, his credit isn't that bad. Uh, we're in the third month and I've gotten 90% of the stuff off his credit report. He's very, very happy. And um, he was telling me that he had a Chase credit card that he was never laid on. He never carried a balance because Half his credit went bad and half his credit stayed good. And then one day he tried to use his Chase card and it didn't work. And he found out that Chase had cut him off. Cause see, this is one of the things that's gonna to happen to you. Remember how I told you that if you had a good income and bad credit back in the day, you could get past that. Well, what's gonna happen? And I, I feel that all the banks are operating this way. If you have a funky FICO score, even if your relationship with them is good, they're going to cancel you because he was like, man, they canceled my chase. They cut my discover and I was never laid on them. And I said, what'd you do? He said, I, I got mad. And I was like, I didn't pay him. So the, the accounts got charged off and I was like, ah, so, you know, and I said, essentially, once you get charged off, you literally destroy your relationship with that bank and they put you on the blacklist. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, and he, he had Discover, Chase, American Express, Barclays, and Bank of America. So he's on the blacklist of all of those banks. They're not gonna, even once his credit, because essentially one of the problems he's having, and I told him what he needed to do, is trying to establish new credit because one of the things with credit repair when you take bad things off if you're not adding positive trade lines your score is not going to go up you'll get those bad things off but your score is pretty much going to stay the same or it may even go down because some of these bad things have age and you remove these things then you remove the age in your credit score and this is what happened with this guy his credit score actually went down 25 points because we got a lot of stuff off, but we got a lot of stuff off that had age because it was all bad. And um, once again, going in the coming environment, 2023, 2024, 2025, you want to have supreme credit. And right now you got time to work on it because right now there is no credit crunch. You can get a car loan, you can get a mortgage, you can get credit cards out the yin yang. Now, as we move into the economy, because uh, one of the things I'm talking to, uh, I actually have kind of diversified my people that I hang around so I can get information. And I know some people who work in restaurants and restaurants are slow, Instacart is slow, Uber, so the economy is slowing down. Now it's tax season. Tax season's been around the country. Then you're going to have these tax season ballers and they're going to be buying stuff. And then we will see what's going to happen after tax season. Tax season's going to be February, March, and April. We will see. And I hear that the Internal Revenue Service is behind. I haven't filed my taxes yet because that's going to be an undertaking because my taxes are somewhat complicated. But in the coming environment, and I want you guys to hear me. You need to have the best 
credit that you can't. You want to have a 750. You want to be 720, 750 at a minimum because the interest rates that you're going to get at 750 and 850, there's not going to be much difference between that. We're talking about a fraction of a point. We're not even talking about a full point or a set of points. So this is the mark of the beast because look at what we've gone through over the last two years. So many people's personal credit is toast. And this is one of the things you've got people who are being globally reset losing their houses, losing their apartments, moving the cars. And these people are having all these collection notices sent to their formal address. So they don't even know what's going on because when you're struggling, last thing on your mind is getting credit. You know, you're just trying to survive. You're just trying to live, right? So these people are FICO ticking time bombs because at some point they're gonna try to get their life together and then they're gonna try to rent an apartment. And this is going to be a big, big issue because just like the banks have said, sure, like, you know, my client uh, from a few years ago and I reached out to him, his credit is great now. And I was like, and I told him, I said, look, what you need to do is you need to keep your credit straight. You cannot let your credit go bad. Like this is some stuff that's happened to me with the car rental business. One of the biggest problems I have is people will get tickets and what they'll do, cause I'm not paying these tickets cause I mean, some of these tickets are rather expensive. And what they will do is send that ticket to a collection agency. And because I know what to do, because when I've gotten, I've got five debt validation letters out right now, because what the collection agency is gonna do is hit me over the head and they're gonna send me and it's like within 30 days, if you dispute this debt. So I sent them a validation letter and that, that way it won't go on my credit report. Because if I was um, ignorant, I could potentially be having five collections going on my credit report in the future. And the, the, these, these assholes, they get these tickets because it's usually the same people over and over again. Like person, I got one person, he's got 10 tickets and that comes up to like $850. I'm not paying that. But because I know the law, because I knew what they were going to do, I knew that they were going to send them to collection agencies. And that's where I went because the state doesn't have the ability to put that on my credit report, like the collection agency. And since I know the law, because I have no agreement with these collection agencies. So essentially, once I send them a debt validation letter, they're pretty much done. They can't put that on my credit report. So because there, there's no contract or anything like that. But once again, that, that, that just like, guys, you have got to do everything in your power to keep your credit straight. You cannot let your credit slip. You cannot let your credit slide because in the future, what's going to happen? Like, like I said, I don't know what they checked for me to move into here, but in the future, if you have a bad FICO and you don't have long-term superb rental history, you're going to get denied you're going to get denied because essentially it's going to be go or no go. And if you have a bad FICO, it's going to be a no go for everything because one of the things, and that's why I call it the mark of the beast. Cause you know, I'm not real well versed on the Bible, so I'm not going to speak in biblical terms, but that three digit score is going to essentially rule and run your life. Because once again, I have like 40 credit cards. And incidentally, me getting a car loan made my credit score go up 35 points. Because, you know, essentially I, you know, I had the mortgage on there and I had, so that was two installments. The getting that car, my credit score went up 35 points and I entered into the 800 club. Now, I'm getting rid of that car. So what I know that, you know, cause you know, and I don't really talk about this, but I'm really well versed in credit. But what I want you guys to do is build a business and get yourself some cash flow, because if you build a business with credit and the business goes bad, you have now two problems. You have now loans to pay back in a failed business. So that's why I really don't want you guys to start businesses with credit. And this is why, you know, since I'm not the apex predator and I'm not going after anyone, I'm leaving people's videos alone. But I can tell you from personal experience, it's a bad, bad, bad ideal 
to start a business on credit that you know nothing about. It is a recipe for disaster. You know, you're better off just starting the business with cash and then getting the business where it gets some cash flow and then add credit to it. But you should not start to rift. Over. No, 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 that's, that's just bad. But right now, we're going, and during the pandemic, we saw a lot of people had their, a lot of their accounts closed. And one of the things since, you know, I've entered into the credit repair world, I got, um, I have, and let me tell you what I'm doing. I got some old accounts that I just don't use because there's no rewards on these accounts. You know what I did? I went through all my credit cards and I went online, I bought something, I put certain subscriptions on them and my utilization across 40 credit cards is 1%. I am using all of my credit cards. And you know, essentially I'm gonna have to use all my credit cards once a year or twice a year. And essentially I've kind of got this strategy like where uh, I just signed up and I got the Apple card just to see how that worked. And essentially what I gotta do is use all my credit. And when I say use all my credit, I'm not like use it to the max, but consistently use my credit cards. If you have old credit cards that you've not used in two, three and four years, you may be facing closure of that account because it's not active. So dig out all your credit cards, look at them. And actually what you want to do is your oldest credit accounts. You want to keep those, whether they're a credit card, a furniture account or something like one of my oldest accounts, the store closed, which would have been riches that they don't exist anymore. That would have been like a 30 year account, which would have been great for my credit score. But what you want to do is start using these cards because what I feel in 2023, 2024, we're in a recession. You're going to, you're going to, a lot of people are going to get their accounts closed because they're not using them because the banks are going to get spooked and they're going to get scared. So what you want to do is use it. If you have a line of credit, you want to do this. You want to pull down that line of credit, put it in a checking account and start paying that line of credit back with the line of credit because what you're going to see because like right now the, there is no credit crunch you can get like the apple the apple credit card was pretty smooth you know i just went in my phone and boom 60 seconds i had an apple credit card so that was pretty smooth but one of the things that you have got to do is manage your credit appropriately like once again your oldest credit accounts you need to keep those bad boys open because uh, one of my clients, um, we had to remove his oldest account because it was a charge off. And his credit score went from 550 to 480. So even if you have bad credit accounts, the removal of these credit accounts can adversely affect your credit age. And once you lower your credit age, you will lower your score. So th this is one of the things, because essentially one of the reasons I'm doing this and I'm doing all this work and I'm going to tell you, credit repair isn't like rocket science hard, but essentially you've got to have a process. You got to have, because we had first, our first, sis, our first step, our second step, our third step, our fourth step. And for many of these people, we're on step number three. We're on the third round of disputes and I've gotten a lot of stuff off and there's one guy, his stuff is horrible it is horrible i've gotten he's got 20 25 bad things he had 25 bad things and i got four off his his is a disaster man it is he's got he, oh he's got child support he's got child support repossessions charge offs and collections and um it's, it's going to take two years to clean up his credit report because this is one of the things like with me starting this credit repair agency, uh, one of the things, one of the first things I'm going to do is have an overview before you sign up because like there's probably seven people after 20. I'm almost done. I mean, there's one person, uh, we, we got, I got, I got some stuff off and he went from a 650 to a 752. And 
we got everything all. He's in the 752s. He says that's the highest credit. My, he says that's the highest my credit score has ever been. So I got seven of them. I'm almost done, and it's only been three, four months. But there's another group. This is going to be a long-term thing. So when I set up my credit repair agency, there has to be a consultation. And the harder, like these guys with the trash credit, I would be charging them three to four thousand because it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of efforts. It's going to take a lot of stuff to do. And one of the things is if you have good credit, you don't want your credit to go bad. You do. I mean, like the people, the seven people, they had marginal stuff. It was pretty simple to clean up their credit. But the 13 with the trash and I, I am so glad that I took on these 20 people because if I start a credit repair agency, because like I said, I'm still thinking about it. Uh, there's going to be different tiers for different people. Like we got to look at your credit report before, you know, I'm going to set it up where you cannot sign up for anything online. You're going to have to get an invoice based upon the degree of difficulty of fixing up your credit. Like the people with these, you know, cause now I have a feel for how this stuff goes. Uh, I would charge them like 700 bucks cause it was easy to get their stuff clean. But the folks with the really bad credit that you're going to have to pay thousands because you're going to be working on that for about a year to possibly two years because some of this stuff, like the guy, I got two things off. I mean, and you know, it, it is, I had no clue to the trouble that people were getting themselves into before I started this. Cause the stuff I've seen, like I got a bunch of guys with late child support and that's going, that's going to be cause uh, the child support agency puts that on there. And those are really, really tricky. Out of the guys, I've gotten two of them. I like, that's like seven, eight guys with child support. I've gotten two of those things off. That's tricky. Um, so you got the child support, you got student loans are a big issue. The repossessions are a big issue. And also one of the things I'm finding that if the debt remains with the original creditor, that's really hard to get off. <laughs> that is, that's a bear. That is a, that's a nightmare. It is actually easier when they sell a debt to a collection agency to get that off. That is actually pretty easy to get it off. You, you actually want them to sell it to a collection agency because that's a lot easier than if the debt remains with the original creditor. Uh, you, you could be, uh, and you know, I've, I've told everyone because I'm doing this for free and I was like, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. Some of you, some of this stuff ain't coming off. It just ain't coming off until it expires. So what you have to do is build good credit. And like I said, um, like me, I'm, I'm, I'm very much like, I never took my credit for granted, but because I have a business and such a high income, I never really used my credit. And honestly, I still don't use my credit. I use my personal credit because essentially uh, my business credit cards is where the love is because I've got to, I got four business credit cards and my interest rates on my business credit cards are lower than my interest rates on my personal credit cards. So at the moment, I'm not carrying a lot of debt, but if I ever had to make a big purchase and carry debt, I would do that on my business credit cards. I would never do it on my personal credit cards because I had one card that I was paying and I, I only had like a $350 balance report. My credit score dropped five points on a $350 balance. It dropped five points. So your, your credit score is very, very sensitive to you using your, your credit. Cause I was sitting there like five points, you know, it wasn't no big deal. And then next month I paid it off and I made sure that I paid it off. And then I actually gained seven points when I paid it off. But going forward, Guys, you cannot play around with your credit. You cannot play around with your credit. Uh, one of the things that you have to do is to make sure that your credit is straight because as we go forward, and now we have a lot of FinTechs, we have a lot of uh, credit cards that you can actually see if you can get the credit card before you get that hard pull, 
which I think is good. Like the Apple card, they do a soft pull and then they make you an offer and they tell you what they're going to give you because uh, they gave me 35,000 at 14% interest rate and I took it. So I'm waiting to get that. But you know, I'm like right now, I, like I got rid of the American Express. I used to have the American Express Platinum. I closed that account because I'm just not traveling during COVID. And you know, I'm just, you know, my, my go-to right now is cashback cards. That's my reward that I want. I'm not trying to get points or miles or anything like that because I'm not really traveling that much. Um, actually don't want to travel that much, but I got rid of all of the cars that had an annual fee. So right now, none of my car, well, the Chase Sapphire has a $95 annual fee, I think, but I got rid of everything that had an annual fee. And that was the cars that had miles and points and stuff like that. Because uh, that Chase Sapphire, when I was doing a lot of YouTube advertising, I flew first class for free for about four years off those points. So once again, I could be a points beast, but right now I'm not traveling. So I don't, I don't really see the sense of just paying all that. But once again, you're gonna have to manage your credit really, I mean, you're gonna have to manage your credit like you never did before. Once again, hear me guys, don't let your credit go bad. Also, don't be using your credit to buy foolish things. If you have $40,000 in the bank and you wanna spend $40,000 on your credit cards and you can spend that $40,000 and pay it off before it hits the statement, okay, that's cool. But do not be carrying a lot of debt. Once again, FICO score, mark of the beast. If you're carrying a lot of debt, that is going to dramatically lower your FICO score. And what I have a feeling in the future is FICO is gonna become even more sensitive to debt because as the economy gets bad and we go through this period, I think they're gonna make adjustments to the FICO algorithm. So if you're carrying a bunch of debt, you could be, you could never miss a payment and you could be sitting at a 660 because you have too much debt. So essentially what you want to do is because this is my this is the playbook that I'm getting ready to run I am not I've pretty much stopped using my personal cards I got one card that I use like a debit card and I just use that and then my go-to is business credit cards why because the business credit cards do not report to my personal credit so I can I can max those bad boys out and it's not going to mess with my FICO so I'm in the process of trying to get even more business credit this year and um, pretty much not going to apply for any more personal credit cards. I got plenty. I got pretty much everything, you know, under the sun. I got what I need. And once again, since I'm not flying, I'm not really going anywhere. I'm not looking for points. So uh, my, my whole goal is to leverage my personal credit for business credit essentially going forward. The only thing I'm gonna be applying for is business credit products. That's pretty much the only thing I'll be applying for. And that's something you should do. You should start a small business and get yourself a business credit card so you can hide utilization. Because starting a YouTube channel, guess what? That's a business and you can get you a business credit card. And once again, I'm telling you because my Wells Fargo's interest rate is like 14%. And um, the Divi, which is like American Express, a charge card, um, there I've not paid a lick of interest with the Divi and the Terpargo. I can use that like a regular credit card, and I have I think I have to pay like 10% of the balance. That's the minimum payment, so whatever the balance is. But the mark of the beast, like guys, you think bad credit is a burden now, five years in the future? It's going to be terrible. It's going to be terrible. It's going to, because <clears throat> essentially what's going to happen for jobs, that's going to be part of the pull for a lot of jobs, like jobs that need a security clearance. They're going to pull a credit report. And if you got bad credit, you're not getting that job. So right now you have time to clean up your credit. And I advise you, if you have bad credit, to start working on it now. Start working on it now while you have time. 
because as this thing rolls, because during the height of the global reset and a lot of when in the recession, people with really good credit scores will still be able to access and use credit. But you're going to have to be well qualified. You can't be borderline because if you're borderline, you're pretty much going to get denied once the, the goalposts move. But yeah, this is the mark of the beast. And one of the reasons I'm thinking about starting the credit repair agency is I know a lot of people have really bad credit right now. And, you know, I, I have to ask myself because here's the plan. I'm going to hire people to do it. I'm not going to do it myself because these 20 people, it's been it's been keeping me kind of busy between that, making YouTube videos, running my other business, the car rental business. It Because it, here's the thing. Even though I'm doing this for free and I had someone that had to have a conversation with, I was like, look, uh, we're not going to be talking every day because I get emails, you know, phone calls. It's like, hey, where are we? I was like, essentially, we dispute 30 days and that's it. Don't call me. I was like, look, and this is someone since I've been working with them, their credit score went from a 550 to a 680 and they're able to get credit cards. And that's like, don't bother me. So, this, you know, like I said, I'm glad I did this trial run to see what I, because there's some people who want to talk every day. It's like, hey, what's going on with my credit? There are some people who expect overnight results because there are channels on YouTube talking about digital deletion. Let me go ahead and explain that. There ain't no such thing as a digital deletion. There is no other agency other than the data furnishers, the discoverers, the Amex, the Chase, that can send data to the credit bureaus. There are no one else who can, you know, in the collection agencies, they have a, a paid relationship. They have to pay to put this stuff on your credit report. That's the only people who have access into the credit bureaus. Like some companies like, hey, we do it all digitally. No, they don't. What they do is they have a software that scans the, you know, your credit report and spits out a dispute letter. Once again, and also guys, you never, ever, ever want to dispute online. You give up your rights and essentially you don't understand the things that you need to do because you should never dispute online. You should always dispute by mail, certified return mail, always. And, you know, I, I sent off um, 20 disputes and it was $7 per letter. Seven dollars, and that, that's something else. Because when I signed up for this, because that was like one hundred and forty dollars at the post office, I was like, "Good lord!" Because now I know. Because one of the things, like when I when I start this up, there will be a consultation first before we get into pricing. Because, uh, like I said, the folks that I'm almost done with, uh, there's people next round of disputes, pretty much be done with them. Took three months, and there are some folks who, oh my god. I am just looking through some of these credit reports and people made decisions based upon what they thought they should do with no regard to the long-term ramifications. And I'm talking about student loans. I've got some people who are literally buried by student loans and that stuff ain't easy to get off your credit report. I don't care what anyone tells you, you know, I, I got a few people with bankruptcies and I was like, look, that bankruptcy is going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. So um, one of the things is you and let's talk about why do people's credit goes bad? There's two reasons people credits go bad. One, they got really sick and they couldn't work or they couldn't work. That's the first reason. The second reason, bad money management habits. That's it. Like me, you know, when I got my first credit cards, I did stupid stuff. I went to Macy's, I went to Rich's, bought some clothes, some shoes and stuff, maxed out my credit card in like three weeks after getting it. That was stupid. Don't do that. Don't be me. That was stupid. But yeah, I'm probably going to do a class on this um, because, you know, I see some stuff on YouTube that is really good and I see some stuff that I know is garbage. I know it's garbage. Uh, I have one person who literally had 15 medical collections that were three, four, five years old. So I had to send 15 validation letters. And then out of those 15, <clears throat> 12 of them came off. And there's three we're still working with. 
So you, you gotta know what to do because typically, especially with medical collections, because you know, I used to be in the medical field, HIPAA is very, very, HIPAA will hit you with a fine. HIPAA fines are no joke. And HIPAA is like your, your patient confidentiality. It, like when I worked in the hospital, I, I'm gonna tell you a story that was, little, I knew of someone who was HIV positive and we developed somewhat of a friendship and I knew his girlfriend. I could not tell his girlfriend that he was HIV positive. That could have got me fired in the hospital hit with a huge fine. I couldn't tell her. I wanted to tell her. And I was like, you, you told her? He said, no, man, no. we always use condoms. She good, she good. I was like, okay. So HIPAA laws are no collection agency wants to get hit with a HIPAA fine. They don't want it. And essentially when they know that you're educated about that, typically if you send them validation letter, they will typically run. And even the ones that want to act like knuckleheads, because I, I got a plan for these knuckleheads, because we got these three. And essentially once we get these uh, three collections off, um, and also when you're getting collections off, <laughs> until you get all of them off, your credit score doesn't make a big jump. Uh, this person, because I was looking at her file today, every time we got a collection off, her credit score went up three points. So her credit score went up almost 40 points. And when we get this last three collections off, her credit score is going to probably jump a hundred points because she's been establishing credit. And you know, that's what the things you have to do because you know, just taking stuff off your credit report is not going to fix it. Uh, it's not going to make your credit score up. You have to establish more credit, but this is the mark of the beast people. I am telling you, you want to have good credit and you want to have good cash flow. You want to have both because, you know, years ago when I was working with this client, I was able to get him a credit card with bad credit. That's, that's out the window. You can't do that no more. So you want to make sure that you have the best FICO score you have. And also to leverage your FICO score, you want to make sure you have robust income. Because, you know, on the Apple card, I put $350,000 income because that's what I pay myself and I can prove it. I've got the pay stubs to prove it. And this year I will have the tax records to prove it. So you, you really want to have high income to leverage your credit because this is the playbook. You want to get the best credit you can on the personal side and then start getting all of these business credit products because, you know, business credit, you can max it out. They don't care. Your paydex doesn't go down because you used all your credit. It is very, very, they expect you as a business to use your credit. That's an expectation. So it's not a problem that you use your credit like it is on your personal side. Cause like, I'm still like, my score dropped five points because essentially I have credit monitoring and whatever something happens on my credit reports, any of them, I get an email and I get a notification and that's how I knew. And I was sitting there like, 350 and my score dropped five points. That was crazy because um, I think collectively, I have to add it up and sit down, but I think I got like $400,000 in available credit. And that's telling me that FICO is sensitive because 350 out of 400,000, that shouldn't have even moved my score. Shouldn't even move my score. And that's one of the reasons I applied for the Apple card to get even more credit because if I use it, cause like I said, this, this is my playbook. I am not using my personal credit, I'm just not using it. Um, essentially I'm going to, um, make some moves this year to get even more business credit and for personal stuff. Like if I want it, like I got, um, my Divi's credit limit fluctuates because it fluctuates upon cash I have in the bank. So when I have a lot of cash in the bank, my credit limit goes way up. But I don't use the Divi credit card that much because it's like American Express, it's a charge card. So if I was to use the Divi card, I would pull that from a business that has a lot of cash flow. Like the car rental business, I could use the Divi card for that, but I prefer to use regular credit cards because like, if I ever needed a reason to flow the balance, I want that option versus Divi. They ain't an option. They ain't an option. And um, since I just built, because like I said, I have four business credit cards. My Paydex is a 90. I don't want to mess that up. Don't want to mess that up. So uh, 
Yeah, man, the mark of the beast. It, this is getting deep. Like I said, if you have bad credit, you want to fix it now. You want to fix it now. And one of the things that I, I'm seeing on YouTube is people want to do such something like get a car or get a house. And at this point, there's this certain urge to get their credit fixed. Don't wait until you want to buy a house. Like you should be working on your credit now because it's urgent because coming and there's and these fintechs are going to come out with some more products. So there's going to be a world of things that you can get. Uh, I have one client whose credit is so bad, he can't get a secured card. Everyone he's applied for a secured card has turned him down. And I was like, okay, you could try US Bank and you can try Self Lender. You can get, I know for a fact, you can get a secured card with Self Lender. They're not gonna give you a high limit. And the most limit is gonna be is 3,000, but at least you can, cause you, you gotta establish these positive trade lines. I cannot understate how important it is to establish positive trade lines to improve your credit score. But the credit score is about to become, like I said, the mark of the beast. If you've got bad credit, you're, you're screwed. You're going to be screwed. You're going to be so screwed. Now I have another client who has high income and he's been able to finesse that income, even though he has bad credit. And he told me, he's like, I'm cash and carry. And he's like, he, you know, and I was like, you really need to fix your credit. Because with your income, you can get a million dollars in business funding. And he's like, what? It's like, if you fix your credit with your legitimate income, you can get a million dollars in business funding. So we're working on his credit and he's got child, like my dudes, this child support that can haunt you for a long, long time. Don't ever get behind on your child support. Don't ever, ever, ever. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's going to be, a, it's like, we're dealing with them because, um, he's current with his child support, but that stuff's still on there. So, um, that's hard. The child support thing is hard. And then, um, you know, we're, we're getting, cause he, he's a trucker <laughs> and he owns a trucking company. He's got five trucks and it's like, all right. And you know, he's doing everything out of cash flow. And I was like, you could be fixing your trucks with a credit card. I mean, there's so many things you can do. And when I explained to him, you know, if you like to travel with your expenses that you have, you could probably get two or three first class round trips a year easy with your expenses. Because I had to explain the whole concept of getting benefits and rewards for something you're already doing. Um, but yeah, I, I'm probably going to do a webinar. I'm not going to, I don't know when I'm going to do that webinar. I'll, once I think about it and get it set up, I'll post a link in the, um, in the first comment and let you guys know, but guys do not be messing around with your credit. Do not be messing around with your credit. I mean, you want to, like I said, and I'm being repetitive for a reason. You want to have the best credit that's possible. And I'm not talking about Bam Man Kevo, like, you know, a lot of his stuff is, you know, he's talking about, you can go out and get all these, these expensive cars and put $50,000. Uh, one thing I do know is if you don't have a, even if you have an 850 credit score, if you don't have a 90 to $120,000 car loan on your credit report, they're not going to give you one without a large down payment. I know that for a fact, because I drive very expensive cars. I know this for a fact. And that's one of the reasons, like for me, you know, for me mentally, I just couldn't see paying that much money for a car per month. But once again, you know, since I'm now in the credit world and you know, um, I will probably, cause like I said, I'm selling the Mercedes and I'm probably going to replace that with a car loan on the new Porsche, just simply to keep my credit. Cause like I said, you know, the car loan actually made my credit go up 35 points. That was like, whoa. Cause one of the things is I have a lot available credit, but I wasn't using it. So now, like I said, I, I've, cause I was kind of worried about my oldest credit card. Cause I haven't used that card in four years. And the other day, I put a charge on it. I put a thousand dollar charge on it and I'm going to actually pay off 800 and then let 200 sit 
and pay that off over time and pay a little interest because I don't want that one closed. And once this global reset starts rolling and we enter the recession, your dormant accounts are going to be starting being closed left and right. They're going to start closing stuff left and right. So you want to use it. You want to if you lines of credit, you want to take the line of credit, put it in the bank account and start paying them back with them, the line of credit because they're going to start closing lines of credit. They're going to start closing credit cards. They're going to start closing, calling loans once this thing starts rolling. But right now, I estimate it's January. You have a year to start working on your credit. You have a year to start working on your credit. And like once I get everything set up, because like I said, um, working on 20 people's credit is it's a lot. It's, it's more than I thought it would be, especially the folks who are needy, who, who want to talk, who want to send emails, who want to talk. I got an email, a five paragraph email from one of them. And this is one whose credit is almost done. I'm like, you're almost done. And I'm just sitting there like, OK, I am so glad I did this before I did the formal lunch. Because one of the things is we have got to look at your credit report before we give you a price. Because, you know, there's gonna be four, you know, like these people with the child support, the bankruptcy, student loans, the charge offs, re those are nightmare credit reports. Those are not, those, that's just heavy lifting right there. Because I, I, this one guy, I told him, I said, man, you're looking at two years just to, you know, get a lot of this stuff off. Cause it's a lot, it's a lot. I'm like, once again, I am gaining an understanding of how people get themselves in such bad situation. And like student loans, that should be the mark of the beast. Um, one of the things that's happening. So guys, hear me. You want to make sure your credit is superb supreme sublime you want to protect your credit at all costs protect your credit at all costs you do not want to have bad credit in the coming financial environment you do not um the people who rent cars from me why do they rent cars because they have bad credit they cannot afford a car they don't have money they, they rent a car because they have bad credit so that, that, that's, that's just one of the things. But guys, this is like, I want you guys to listen to me. And once again, thank you for all of the new people who are coming. Actually, I'm gonna put this at the front of the video because you know, like, I need to do that. But that's all I got. Let me know your feelings and opinions and stuff and put that in the comments.